Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. My name's Eric. And I'm Nicole. Now that we're finally done with phonons, time to move on to my favorite portion of the course, electrons. Over the rest of the semester, we'll look at electron transport in materials, different properties that arise from that, and near the end, touch on some electronic and optical devices. But for today, we're going to start with a free electron model developed by Summerfield in 1933, and then look at fixed and periodic boundary conditions. Just as a reminder for those who haven't seen the free electron model, we're assuming that there are no interactions between the electron and the nuclei, or electrons with other electrons. So effectively, our system is comprised of one electron. That's right, folks. Only one electron in our system and no interactions. One thing to note is that the potential we're using is a flat box where V equals some constant inside the box and is infinite everywhere else. Sounds like a completely unphysical train wreck, doesn't it? Nicole, how do you want to start solving this? Well, in any sort of quantum problem, we always start with the time-independent Schrodinger equation as given here, including the system potential. And to make things easier, I'm going to wrap up the potential into our system energy with this new variable E. Good, so now we have a relatively easy DE that's going to give us a standing wave solution, but what are we missing? Our boundary conditions, right? Indeed, so let's assume that our electrons never leaves the box. Then our wave function would be zero at the box edges. This prefactor comes from normalizing the integral of psi star psi to one. And because our wave function is made of sine waves, we can then put limitations on our k vectors that goes as pi over the length of our box times some integer ni. Now we have an expression for k, we should think about what values we can use for ni. Can we use zero? Well, we could, but then that makes psi equal to zero. Pretty hard to normalize that. And what about negative values for ni? It would basically just give us the same wave function, so there's no sense in using that either. Indeed, and thus we only have positive integers for n sub i without an upper limit because our potential is infinitely tall. And now that we have our wave function, we can plug that back into our Schrodinger's equation and get a quadratic relationship between our system energy and our k values. And this should seem familiar because it's basically our dispersion relation, but for electrons instead of phonons. One important thing we should point out, Nicole, is because we define k in terms of an integer n sub i, our k space is discrete, just like it was in phonons. Where the spacing is pi over l instead of 2 pi over l. Yeah. And a good way to visualize the dispersion is to look at the first quadrant. We can carve out these constant energy surfaces by using the magnitude of the k value, squared, as our radius, so we can make one-eighth of a sphere. And with that, we're pretty much done with the fixed boundary conditions. How do you think psi will change for periodic boundary conditions? Well, for periodic conditions, our wave function at some position x should equal the same wave function at x plus l for 1d. So we could just use the traveling wave solution, where we have a complex exponential, and this time, k is a vector. And then what limitations will we have put on k? Well, I don't think we have to, because k equals zero gives us something we can normalize, and negative k values give us unique wave functions. So then just like phonons, the spacing in k space will be 2 pi over l. This may seem a little unnerving at first. What is? The k-spacing. What was it for the standing wave? Pi over l. Oh, they're different. Yeah, they are. Is that okay? Well, it should be if the number of points up to a certain energy level are the same. Exactly. The total points would just be the volume times the number of points per unit volume. For the fixed boundaries, we only have one-eighth of the volume of the sphere with a spacing of pi over l. But for the periodic case, even though we use the whole sphere volume, the spacing is twice as big, and so when you cube it, you get the same one-eighth factor up front. So while the case space looks different for the different approaches, they are consistent in terms of the number of electronic states So it looks like it's about time to do a recap. We began today by approximating our system as one electron trapped in an infinite square well. 
Then we developed a dispersion relation for the electron as a function of its quantum number k. Although we developed a solution for the wave function using fixed and periodic boundaries, in this course we'll focus on periodic boundaries, and thus the traveling wave solution for psi. Here's a question to think about for today. This model has no potential at the bottom, which seems like a ridiculous oversimplification. When do you think this is going to be appropriate? So thanks for watching today's solid state physics in a nutshell. Next time we'll take a look at Fermi-Dirac statistics as a way to fill our electronic states. See you then!